In this video, I'm going to discuss the alternating series estimation theorem. Estimating a sum. Um, what we can do? We can compute a partial sum of the convergent series, and in this case, it must be the alternating series. And we can use this partial sum to approximate the entire sum, the total sum S. However, the this approximation is not going to be really helpful unless we will find the accuracy of the approximation. That means what we will have, the error involved in using the approximation that the partial sum S sub n is almost the same like the entire sum. Of course, we will have a difference and we will call this remainder. And let's see on my, uh, on the, on the expanded form. That means what we have, we do have an alternating series, of course convergent, because otherwise it's not even uh, logically to talk about the sum if it's divergent. That means this is convergent. And this is the expanded form. Of course, we adding every other term is negative. And I do have a few lines. The first line represents the, the partial sum. That means I am just ending at the term B sub n, and this is my S sub n. My longer line underneath represent, represents the entire sum. And we can see, we can see the small difference. That means this difference. My line is a little bit slopey. This difference, of course, is the long line minus the shorter one, which is the entire sum minus the partial sum. And this will be our remainder, or we can say error. Okay. And magnitude. We have to estimate the accuracy of this error. How big or, of course, how small is this error? That means let's look and let's try to estimate. One more time, the error will be defined as uh, the entire sum minus partial sum. We know that. Okay. The partial sum, the partial sum I um, expanded, that means S sub n means all of the terms adding up to B sub n. This represents the entire sum, S. And I have expanded form one more time. That means this is, the entire sum S, and this is just up to B sub N, which is the partial sum, adding N terms. And let's see what's happened. Having this, uh, the difference between the S, the entire sum and the partial sum, we can nicely see that most of the terms are cancel out. Like we were looking in the previous slide on these lines, the big line minus the shorter line. That means we definitely have the terms up to B sub N, it's cancelled out. That means what's left? Always, we will left with the next term that is not including, okay, the next term, which is B sub N plus one, and we're still subtracting, adding and subtracting. All of the terms are getting smaller and smaller. This quantity will be always positive anyway, but I still keep the absolute value. However, we can see that the remainder, which is the error, it's equal to this B sub N plus one minus the other terms. However, subtracting more terms, I am making even smaller my error. That means my error is less than, definitely less than, than the next missing term. That means this is really nice property. Okay? And I can say that the size of the error is smaller than the next a term which is B sub N plus one, or I can say that um, the magnitude of the error is going to be no more, no more than the magnitude of the first term that are not including in our partial sum, which means adding N terms, the next term that is not including is the term N plus B uh, sub N plus one. And that means it's the first neglected term. Okay, that means this is the alternating series estimation theorem. Let's have the summary. 
if the infinite series, the alternating series, okay, uh, defined as a summation from one to infinity, negative one to the n minus one, and the b sub n is the sum of alternating uh, series that satisfies all of this condition. We recognize this. b sub n is positive, limit at infinity of b sub n is zero, and of course, b sub n is decreasing. That means we are satisfying all of this. This means that the alternating series is convergent. Then, approximating a sum by the partial sum, we have the size of the error of the remainder. The size of the error s minus s sub n is always less than the term b sub n plus one. And we know what this means. I do have the proof of this. You're more than welcome to pause the video and go through. And also this illustration, this is also showing me that the difference between the, par the particular partial sum and the actual sum, it's always less than the next term. And we can even pick one value. Uh, let's even say this is the value of the entire sum and this is value of the five terms, S sub five. That means that's the difference between them. And we can see my line is definitely less than the next term, which means this was S sub five. This will be the magnitude of the next miss, uh, missing term, which is B sub six. And we can see the top line is longer than this, than the bottom one. The bottom one is the difference. The bottom one is the difference between the entire sum and the partial sum. And this is definitely less than B sub six, of course, the magnitude. And as we can see, that's a nice proof too. Okay, let's practice and let's solve a few examples. Ex exercise number one. What minimum number of terms of the series, the summation from one to infinity, negative one to the n over 10 to the power of n, n factorial, do we need to add in order to find the sum with the error less than 0 0.00005? That means what we know. We know that the error, the remainder, is less than the next term. Okay? That means we still don't know what is the minimum number of terms. Minimum number of terms. That means what we will do. We have to find out a term. Okay? And I actually, I want, I want this error. I can write to be less than zero, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, four, five. And actually I will change this number because this is not telling me much and we don't have a calculator to support ourselves. That means we will do a little bit trick. I will rewrite this as a fraction. That means this is five divided by one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I can simplify 10 divided by five is two. That means my size of the error must be less than one over, and I have 200,000. I believe that's correct. Okay. That's me now what I'm looking for. I am looking for the term that is less than 200,000. And the only thing that is I have to do, I have to find a term that corresponds to my inequality. Okay, let's see. Uh, looking at this alternating series, I can see that B sub N is just one over 10 to the power of n times n factorial. That's me now. Let's compute b sub one. b sub one, I will just substitute one instead of n. n factorial is, um, one factorial is one, 10 to the power of one is 10, one over 10. But one over 10 is much, much greater than the number that I am looking for. Okay? I want my value, my term to be less than 
one over 20 hundred thousand. Okay, B sub two will be one over 200. I hope we can see this because 10 to the power of two is um, 100 and two factorial is two. Two times 100 is 200, but this is still greater than one over 200,000. Okay, let's find B sub three. B sub three is one over 6,000 because three factorial is six and 10 to the power of three is just one and three zeros, thousand. Thousand times six, of course, is 6,000. I believe this is still greater because what I'm looking, I'm looking for the denominator to be greater than 200,000, then the whole fraction is smaller. Okay, let's check B sub four. B sub four will be 10 to the power of four, which will be uh, 10,000, and four factorial is 24. That means 24 and four zeros. That's what I write. It's 24,000, and I see that 20, um, 240, let's just look at this, this um, 240,000 uh, is definitely more than 200. That means if the denominator is bigger, the whole fraction is smaller. Okay, that means what I did. I found a first term, the minimum number. I found the first term that is less than my desired error. Okay, that means we can see B sub 4 satisfies my inequality. Okay, B sub 4. But now I have to be really careful because 4 okay, is this quantity. Okay, 4 is this quantity. That means if I have to like recover n, n will be one number less because we can see B sub 4 was the first term that was not including in the sum. That means I have to take the partial sum just including three terms, okay? Always one number less. Since the fourth term is less than the desired error, we need to add the first three terms to get the sum of the desired accuracy, okay? That means the final answer is, I can even write n equals to three because that's the minimum. However, all of the other numbers greater than three will all also satisfy the equation. But the question asks for the minimum numbers because when I add more terms, automatically my error is even smaller. That means I'm definitely satisfying um, the condition of this question. Okay, but the minimum number is three. N equals to three. Okay, let's do the same question, just different condition. Find minimum number of terms of the series, alternating one, of course, negative one to the N over N times five to the N. Do we need to add in order to find the sum with the error less than one over, I think, it's point, um, zero, 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 0001, but what we will do, the same what we did in the previous question, we do have 10,000, I believe, one, two, three, four, four zeros, mm -hmm. 10,000. That means the error must be less than one over 10,000. Because my B sub N, I can possibly write here, it's one over N, times five to the n, and we can definitely see is positive, decreasing, and limit is zero. That means this is infinite, the alternating series convergent, which it actually makes sense to talk about the sum. Okay, that means the same thing. That's my alternating series estimation theorem. I'm looking for the term that is less than or equal one over 10,000. And again, finding the term, I always have to take one number less for the partial sum in order to keep this accuracy. Okay, let's do the same. 
B sub one is one over five. Let's see if we agree. One and and five to the power of one is simply five. Okay, this is definitely greater than ten thousand in the denominator. B sub two is two times twenty five. Two times twenty five, of course, is fifty. The same. Huh? This is definitely greater than my small fraction, one over ten thousand. B sub three will be three, and five to the power of three is one hundred twenty five. I think this is still, if I multiply 3 times 125, I'm not gonna get 10,000. This is still bigger. Okay, let's try 4. B sub 4 is 4, and 5 to the power of 4 is 25 times 25, 625, we all know that. And if I multiply 600 times 4, I, I'm not gonna get 10,000. That means this is still bigger. And let's say this one. Um, B sub 5 will be 5. And 5 to the power of 5, we have to take 625 and multiply again by 5. I think we can take time somewhere on the side and get this. Okay, but now what I'm getting, multiplying the number around 3,000, I will get 15,000. That means this number will give me a fraction less than, that's me, yes, I found that the term B sub five satisfies my inequality, my fear. That means we have to remember five represents this number, n plus five. Then the conclusion is, since the fifth term is less than desired error, we need to add the first four terms because four plus one is giving me five that means n is four or of course we can pick any number greater than four because if i add more terms um, the partial sum s sub four um, but i can add five terms i can get the partial sum with the six terms seven terms i will be adding more terms then i will be making error even smaller that means I will be definitely in that, I will keep that accuracy. Okay? That means please know that any number equals to four or greater than four, number of terms will keep this error less than one over 10,000. But what we're looking for, we're looking for the minimum value. Four is the correct answer for this question. Okay, let's look at the next one. What minimum number of terms of the series negative one to the power of n over n factorial do we need to add in order to find the sum uh, with the error less than two over two over ten thousand? The same thing. Let's simplify a little bit. Two over ten thousand. I can simplify. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 10 divided by 2 is 5. That means I do have my error less than or equal 1 over 5,000. Okay, that means the same idea. Let's look at the, this is my alternating series. The formula for B sub n is just 1 over n factorial positive, decreasing, limit zero, it's definitely convergent, the sum exists. That means this makes sense to even talk about this question, this accuracy. Okay, let's look at the term that has a value less than one over 5,000. Let me write my B sub n, maybe over there. Okay, B sub one is just one. Of course, much, much bigger than one over 5,000. B sub two is one over two factorial. Okay, and one over two factorial. Um, let's, it's one, one over two.
Let me one second. I I'm just trying. Okay, that means this is one over two. Of course, it's much much bigger than one over five thousand. Okay, let's keep working. Uh, three factorial. I think it's one one times two times three. It's one over six. This is also um, bigger than five thousand in the denominator. Let's keep working. Probably four is one times two times three times four is twenty four. That means twenty four is also not giving me a fraction great smaller than one over five thousand five. The five factorial is 24 times 5, which will be 120. And this is also not good. Uh, oh. oh, okay. I think you can, we can see, but let's see. Six factorial, we have to multiply 120 times 6, and we will get 7. We will get 720, uh, which is also greater than this fraction. B sub 7, 7 factorial is quite big number, but what we can do, we can we have to multiply 6 factorial times another number, 7. 720 times 7 will give me a number, I did the math before, 5040. Oh, okay, that means this works. That means actually I don't know if my, if my numbers are correct. That's the reason that is a little bit, we will, we will correct it. Uh, this is 5,040. That means my denominator is greater. The whole Excellent. That means actually not the eighth term, the seventh term works. Let me do the same notation that I did for the previous. Seven represents this number. That means I can repeat, I can change this. The seven term is less than the desired error. Then we need to add actually one term less. We, re we, need, we, we just learned this. That means if the B sub seven works, we will add the partial sum of the six terms. That means the minimum number is six. We also know that any numbers greater than six also works because adding more terms we minimize the error but the minimum number is six okay that means this is st still not not big computation even if it's the exam type question and we don't have a calculator we can still manage yeah? it is a little bit required a little bit of arithmetic but it's not a problem that means six is the correct answer. Okay, and I have one more example. Okay, now the series below is convergent. Okay, that means this is, and we can see is the alternating. The series below converges. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. Um, correct my own writing. The series below converges and that's the series. The summation from one to infinity, negative one to the n, n squared plus 10. Okay. And we can see the formula for b sub n is just one over n squared plus 10. Positive, limit zero at infinity and decreasing. That means it is convergent. If we would like to estimate the sum, the whole sum as of this series by the sum of the first seven terms, and that means we just need to add seven terms. Then the alternating series estimation theorem guarantees that the error is less than or equal, and we have to find a number. And we have to find a number. That means, let's see, that's the property again, that's the theorem. And we, what we're doing, we actually trying to find the error, estimate the error, adding seven terms only. And that means adding seven terms, having a partial sum as sub seven, we will of course subtract from the entire sum and this will be the error. And we know that the gain, the magnitude of the error is less than the magnitude of the first term that is not including, which will be eight. Okay? 
That means the error is definitely less than or equal B sub 8. And it's just enough to compute B sub 8 term. That means B sub 8 will be 8 squared plus 10. And we don't have to do anything, which is 64. B sub 8, of course, will be 8 squared, 64 plus 10, 1 over 74. That means the error is less than or equal 1 over 74. And that means that's, I can put this number, 1 over 74. Okay, and of course, I just write the same thing because it's seven terms, the eight. We don't have to write this. Okay, that means that's all of my examples. Okay. Uh, I do have a quick note for, for the estimation, for this estimation theorem. That means the rule that the error um, in this approximation is smaller than the first neglected term is like in general. And it's valid only for the alternating series that satisfies the conditions of the alternating series estimation theorem. Okay? The rules does not apply for, for any other types of the series. That means, please note, we can only apply this theorem for the alternating series. Thank you.